Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to align maps to the Roll20 grid. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Now, the maps that you've bought from the Roll20 Marketplace, or the ones that are included in Roll20 modules, like this map of Castle Ravenloft from Curse of Strahd, are already properly sized and aligned. But I often find maps on Reddit or other places that I want to include in my game. And for many of those, it's just a simple matter of dragging the image onto the map layer in Roll20, and then letting Roll20 automatically size the map for you. But every now and then, the map has a grid on it, and that grid doesn't align properly to Roll20s. Thankfully, Roll20 forum champion Gauss came up with an approach to solve this problem. So Gauss, thank you for everything you do to help the community, and let's see how to set this up. So just to start out with, I want to mention that one of the maps I'm demoing with today comes to us from the amazing artist Jared Blando, who put together this fantastic map bundle for the House of Lament, which is an adventure included in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. And while these maps are gorgeous, they weren't designed with a VTT in mind, which means that the grid on the maps don't align properly with the grid in Roll20. So what I want to do today is show you how to use Gauss's steps to make that happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm on the map layer in Roll20, and then I'm going to drag on my map that I've already uploaded onto the page here. And this time around, we're going to ignore this message here. We're just going to cancel this box. And just to illustrate what I'm talking about here, if I put the map into the corner right now, you can see, like right here, that the Roll20 grid, which are these pale white lines, don't match up with the grid lines on the map itself. And that's what we want to fix, because otherwise, if we go and we put a monster on the battle map, it's not going to sit properly within the grid. You can see right here, it's kind of confusing as to which square this guy is actually in right now. So we're going to align the map properly with the Roll20 grid. All right, so the first step that we want to do is increase the size of the page itself. So we're going to go into the page menu here, go to our page settings, and I'm actually just going to change this to something like 100 by 100 cells, which is huge and way bigger than we need. And that's okay. Basically, what we want to do is just make the page and ultimately the map as big as possible. So say okay to this because we're going to resize it back down to normal before we actually play. And then what you want to do is zoom out a little bit and we're just going to stretch the map as much as we possibly can. Again, we want this as big as possible because the bigger the image and the bigger the page, the easier it is for us to align this properly to the grid. So I'm just making the map absolutely huge. There we go. Okay, so this looks good. The next thing we want to do is make it so it's easier to see just the maps grid lines. So right now we see both the Roll20 grid and the map grid. And just so that it's easier for us to kind of parse which is which, we're going to hide the Roll20 grid. To do that, we're going to go up to the page toolbar, click on the maps cog, and then we're going to set the opacity for the grid all the way down to zero. We're not turning the grid off. We need the grid to stay on in order to align it properly, but for right now, we're basically just hiding the grid. So now what we're going to do is find a 3x3 three three section of the map where it's very easy to see the map's grid lines. And so this section right here looks really clean to me. It's very easy to pick out the individual nine squares. What I'm going to do is zoom in on that area. We want to make this as big as possible so it fills as much of the screen. Because in order for us to use Roll20's Align to Grid tool, we need to be able to select a 3x3 three three area of the map. And the bigger that area is, the more precise we're going to be when we select it. So this area is taking up almost my entire screen right now. This looks good. I'm going to right click on the map. I'm going to go to Advanced. And I'm going to say Align to Grid. And now what I'm going to do is just click and highlight that 3x3 three three area. And I want to make sure I'm as tight as I possibly can be. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to release the mouse. And now Roll20 asks if we want to proceed with the alignment. We're going to say align to grid. There we go. And now Roll20 has resized our image. You may need to zoom out and sort of look around on the map to figure out where the image actually went. So I'm going to grab this now. I'm just going to move this towards the upper left corner of the map. All right. So I'm back in the upper leftish area of the map. That's good. 
All right, so now what we want to do is turn those grid lines back on. So I'm going to go to the toolbar again. I'm going to go to my settings here and I'm going to set the opacity of the grid all the way up as much as I possibly can. And I'm also going to set the color to be something that's going to stand out against the map. And the idea here is we want to see exactly how the roll 20 grid and the maps grid are lining up and let's zoom in here so this is a little easier to see and so you can see right here that the roll 20 grid is in the bright blue the maps grid is sort of the, the darker lines here and these obviously do not align i think the important thing to mention here is what we're looking to do is align the maps grid to the roll 20 grid we're not trying to line the roll 20 grid up to the map we're trying to move the map such that its lines are going to align properly with roll 20s and so to kind of help us with that there's two things we're going to do to start with if we zoom in even further here i'm going to zoom in into the upper left corner and so what i want to do is align the first perfect square in the map that i can see with the grid in roll 20. so right here this white line is the first full line that i can see going horizontally and this white line right here is the first line I can see vertically. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the Alt key and then drag the map so that that is lined up, so that the very first cell is aligned there. And we can see now that the top line of my map is lined up and the left line here is lined up as well. Okay, now one quick thing to mention is that when you're doing that initial alignment, you can hold down Alt and then use your arrow keys to nudge things up or down or left and right to make sure that things line up properly. So if you're having trouble getting very precise with the mouse, uh, you can do this. Okay, we've got that very first line set up going both horizontally and vertically. Great. So now let's focus on the horizontal alignment. If I zoom in again, and we can see I'm a little bit high here. So I'm going to again, alt and, and nudge this down just a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. And so now what we want to do is look row by row to see if the maps lines are lining up with the roll 20 lines. And so our first line looks really good. But if we come down to the next line, we can kind of see that the maps line is a tiny bit higher than the roll 20 line. And then on the next line, it's, it's a little bit higher and then a little bit higher. And the further down the map we go, the more north effectively the line is creeping. What that means is we need to stretch the image so that the maps lines move down so they align with the roll 20 lines. So what I'm gonna do is zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the image. And again, I'm gonna hold down Alt before I click on the image and I'm gonna drag the map down until I can see the grid lines line up again. I'm gonna let go of the mouse, let go of Alt. I'm gonna scroll back up and I'm gonna look at the horizontal lines again, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And so one thing we wanna mention here is we wanna double check and make sure that the top grid line that we aligned to initially is still aligned because it's possible we bumped it up or down a little bit. And so we just wanna make sure that that line is still aligned properly before we move on. This looks pretty good. And so now we can check if the maps grid lines are lined up to roll 20s. Everything seems pretty well set up. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. So we stretched the map so that now all the grid lines going horizontally are good. Cool. So now what we need to do is repeat that same process for the vertical lines. And again, over here, we see that our first set of lines are pretty good. But again, the grid lines start to misalign the further we go to the right. And what's happening here is the maps grid is moving beyond the roll 20 grid lines. And when the maps grid line is further beyond the roll 20 lines, it means the image is too big and it needs to be shrunk. So if the lines fall short of the roll 20 line, the image needs to be stretched. If the lines on the map are beyond roll 20's grid, then the image needs to be shrunk. So what we're gonna do is scroll to the right, and just like we did with the horizontal lines, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, 
hold down alt, click on the image. I'm going to find the handle here. And I'm just going to shrink the image until I can see it realign with the grid lines here. Okay, releasing the mouse, releasing Alt, I'm going to scroll to the left. And you remember earlier we double checked to make sure we hadn't moved that initial line that we aligned to. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to make sure that we're still aligned to the first vertical line that we can see. This looks pretty good. So now let's check to see how the vertical lines are stacking up. How this is looking. And... Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Looks like we're pretty well aligned now. And we can test that real quick. We can grab a, another monster and throw it onto the map. And let's actually put it onto the token layer so it aligns properly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like we are pretty well aligned now. So let's get our shadow out of here. All right, but now, of course, if we zoom out, we see that our page is absolutely huge. And we don't need all this extra space anymore. So our next step is going to be to reduce the page size. And so probably the easiest way to do this is to go back to the map layer, click on the map itself, right click and go advanced set dimensions and just make a note of what the units of this are. So you can see this page is about 24 and a half units by 30 and a half units. We're going to go a little bit bigger than that. We're going to go 26 and 32 and you'll see why in a second. So let's go in here. We're going to go to page set dimensions and we're going to say 26 by 32. We'll say save settings. All right. And now the page is resized. And the reason that we wanted a little bit more to the page, because as you can see, when the image is aligned to the grid, the edges kind of hang over. We've got like an extra three quarters of a row up here. We've got like an extra third of a row on the margins. So we've basically made the page big enough to accommodate those partial rows. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure we don't accidentally bump the map and misalign it after we've gone through all this effort. So right click on the map again, go to advanced and say lock position. And now you won't accidentally nudge the map out of alignment. Now, I also have this white space running around the edges of the map. I don't want that. So I'm going to go to the page toolbar again, go to the page settings, and I'm going to set the board color and I'm going to make that black and save settings and close. And now we've got the cells filled in nice and dark and it kind of blends in with the motif of the map itself. And my players don't see just plain white space. And then the very final thing that we're going to do is set the map grid back to normal. We're going to make the opacity back down to about, say, a third. And I'm going to set it back to the gray. That's sort of the default. Save that. And there we go. Now we've got our map all set and ready to go. Now we can also do something similar for hex grid type maps. But since hex grids are probably not as prevalent as the square type map that you use in battle maps, I'm just going to kind of talk through the approach that you'll take here rather than going through every single step by step and having you watch me do everything along the way. So here I've got the map of Chult from Tomb of Annihilation. And first thing I want to do is make sure that my page is set up to use hex maps instead of square maps. So I'm going to come to grid type and I'm going to choose hex. Now you'll notice there's two choices here. There's hex V and hex H. And which one you use depends on the orientation of the hexagons on your map. If the hexagons have their pointy parts going east west, then you have a hex H map. If the pointy parts of the hexagon are going up and down, then you have a hex V map. So this is a hex H map. I'm going to select that. And just like before, I want to make the opacity of my grid as dark as possible. And I want a color of the grid that's really going to stand out against the colors in this map. So you always want to choose a color that's going to stand out well against the map. So we had that blue before, which was really nice against the darker background but we have enough blue and green in this map that the cyan's probably going to get lost. So I'm going to use this dark red instead. And we'll save settings. Okay. And so now we can see the hex grid from roll 20 and we can also see the hex grid on the map itself. Just like before, we want to make sure that we've got the page nice and big and that we've stretched the map out quite a bit. That's going to make it easier for us to align everything properly. So I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit more. There we go. And then just like with the square map, we want to find the topmost visible horizontal line 
in the map and align that to roll 20's grid. Now the challenge here is that this sort of map is much more visually distracting than the square maps are because the pattern that the hexagons make I find personally very visually disorienting. So when we're talking about aligning to a horizontal line in Roll20, we're talking about aligning like this, right? So you can see that there is a horizontal line that cuts through the pointy bits in each of the hexagons. So that's kind of what we're trying to align to. So looking here, I can see that the topmost horizontal line, I'll, I'll draw in Roll20 here, the topmost horizontal line for the map is right like this. So that's what we want to try and align to. So I'm going to, again, use the select tool to click on the map, and then I'm going to hold down Alt, and I'm going to nudge the map a little bit so that everything lines up properly. And with all the, the continents here and whatnot, this is kind of, again, visually noisy. So I'm going to move into the water part of the map where it's a little bit cleaner and not quite as much visual noise. And so I'm going to try and align on that. And so right here, I can see there's the, the line. So I'm going to nudge the map up. Okay. And now I can see that line. Now, the important thing to know when you're working with hex maps is that you want to align to the flat side first. And we're using a hex H map like this, so what we're doing right now is the right way to go. If we were doing a hex V map where the flat lines were going up and down, then we would want to align that way first. But here we're making sure that we are aligning to the top row first. Okay, so that looks good. And now this is just a lot of trial and error. There really isn't an align to grid tool for hexes. So from here on in, what we're gonna do is scroll down, we're gonna find the edge of the map, we're gonna click on it, we're gonna hold down Alt, and we're going to shrink the map. And I'm gonna just roll up here, and we'll go, let's go a couple of hex rows, let's try that. And now we'll scroll up to the top, we'll look again, and we can see that we're close, but we're not quite there. We're still a little too tall. If I look like right here or at, let's, let's zoom in a little more, like right here, you can see that we're still low. So then I would repeat this process to shrink the map again, get all the horizontal lines aligned, and then we'd switch gears and start going left to right to get the hexes to align to roll 20's grid. It's really just a lot of trial and error with a hex map and I'm not going to do it right now on the video because I don't think anybody really wants to watch me mess around with this for 15 minutes while I get everything squared away perfectly. But the upshot is this is the approach that you'll take. Align the flat sides of the hex map first and then you can align the other angles and go from there. So there you have it. That's how you can align maps to the grid in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Until next time, folks. Have a great day.